thank, thank you for being here today. Thanks, everybody in this room. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, it's a historic day. It should be celebrated. Uh, you know, I, I think that um, this is uh, not only our first signing class, but obviously a historic class in UTEP history, and, and we're going to cover that and go over that. Um, but I, first off, I, I'd be remiss if I uh, did not thank uh, – Everybody that had a hand in this, um, from you know Jim Center taking his time every Saturday to talk to the recruits, to our compliance department being on top of every single ounce of paperwork. Which, um, if you've never done an official visit before, uh, it is uh, you know it, it's like an act of Congress to get a kid here. You you have to, uh, and that's for every university. You have to go through parameters and uh, to have a team uh, as dedicated uh, as our compliance team and our academic team to get those things done. In, uh, in, in, in uh, you know, really quick fashion um, is absolutely unbelievable. And so it, it, the reason why we were able to sign a class like we were is logistically we were able to get those things done. Um, and then next up, uh, I, I, I got to thank, uh, there, there's, uh, you know, many men on my staff that are here to, here, uh, to my right, to the camera's left, uh, that I, I want to thank. Uh, our staff is the hardest working coaching staff in the country. And they deserve to be recognized. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to recognize them uh, tonight, um, you know, by name uh, and, and give them a, a formal um, recognition tonight. But if, if you follow our staff on Twitter, um, if, if you know them, if you've met them, uh, I've, I am blessed to be surrounded by the, the best coaching staff, the hardest working coaching staff in the country to, to do what. Uh, and again, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and be, be shy, guys. I'm going to be I'm going to be a little boastful because um, what has been done here in a two-month period um, even surpassed our expectations. Um, but I, I think that what you're going to see with this class is us starting to awaken what's out here out west. And we meant what we said when we said win the west. And, and I, we have started that. I know we have to win games in the fall, and I know we have a long way to go. But we, something we've been talking about as a staff, something I've been big on, is we're going to celebrate every victory. We need to celebrate every single victory that UTEP has, all right? So if, if we got a kid that, you know, is, uh, you know, academic minor of the week, had a, had a perfect week academically, we need to celebrate that. When our kids do well in the weight room, we need to celebrate that. And certainly when we sign a recruiting class of this caliber, uh, we're going to celebrate it, all right? So this is going to be a day of celebration. Uh, this is going to be a night of celebration uh, as we get into tonight and celebrate uh, our, our signing class with our athletic department, our, our, our fan base and alumni base. But... Um, I, I, I just I don't think I can say enough about our coaching staff and their families and their sacrifice. You know, these guys, we do official visits Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then, man, that Sunday night, they turn right around. They're right back on the road getting ready for Monday and leaving their family behind to, to hit a deadline, to hit a school, to make sure we hit, hit this kid at the right time. This is a very intentional plan. Uh, none of this was at random. And it takes an enormous amount of people to be bought in from compliance to academics to our staff to everybody in alignment to get this thing done. So um, I'm not trying to be long-winded on the thanks. I mean, every, I mean every word of it because this is a historic class, guys, and we're going to celebrate it as such. So let me, let me run through some numbers for you, and then I'm going to go over each kid in this class, and I'll open it up for questions. But these are some key stats. We tried to do our best to get because there's so many great things about this class. We tried to get it narrowed down for you. So I'm going I'm to take my time here and go through for you. But these deserve to be highlighted and praised. Number one, this is the highest rated class in the University of Texas at El Paso history. And it's okay to clap around the room, okay? If we want to, if we want to do that, that's okay. All right, I'm going to clap because I, I am dang proud. The, the previous high score was in 2019 with a score according to 247 of 133.3. Today, we reset that mark by 20 points at 153.78. Um, number two, this is the highest conference USA finish ever in UTEP history. Right, according to Rivals.com, it is the number one recruiting class in Conference USA. And we're going to clap it up again on that one. Right? We'll clap it up again on that one. And it is the number three ranked class as of right now on the 247 page, according to that website. Obviously, we are definitely going with Rivals. We believe in that evaluation there. All right, because those guys put us number one, right? Um, the next highest finish uh, to, to even come close to that was in 2023, last year, um, when the UTEP signing class was at uh, number seven in the conference. And so we just jumped that by six spots going to number one. Um, in the last, um, uh, let's see, the last eight out of 13 years, uh, the UTEP 
recruiting classes, unfortunately, had finished last or second to last each time. And so we are really excited to make this jump. I think it, it further drives home the point. Um, you know, when we took this job, people said, you can't recruit out here. Like, good luck recruiting out there is what they told me, what they told my staff. And with hard work, with dedication, with relationships, because you got to understand, these high school guys that we just signed, yes, we knew some of them, but we, did, we, we, had to, we, we got on these guys late. Uh, and to do what we've done in two months' time, uh, guys, I, I am, I'm just – it is an unbelievable feat to, to make that happen. And, um, you know, we just had a junior day. We had over 200 kids on campus. I mean, again, people said you can't get kids out here on unofficial visit. This staff is going to hustle, and one thing, our staff, they know it, and, uh, and people are going to find out, you know, we don't, we don't take the, 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 uh, the, the answer no real well in recruiting. We, we fight. We fight like heck uh, all the way to the bitter end, and so I'm, I'm so proud of those top two stats. Um, kind of going down to the list number three right here, we have signed the top two highest-rated high school players in UTEP history. Uh, in December, we celebrated Martavius Collins. Uh, you know, that was an amazing feat. And Martavis is here on our campus working really hard right now. Um, his his, his uh, uh, championship belt was a uh, reign was short-lived uh, because uh, we just hide, hi, uh, signed the, the new uh, highest-rated recruit in, in UTEP history, and that's Jalen Jones, an edge uh, outside linebacker. He's going to be a bandit for us from Beaumont Westbrook High School. He is now the highest-rated player in UTEP history. So Martavius held that crown for all about a month and some change, and, uh, and Jalen came in. But nonetheless, uh, two amazing players that are in our class. Uh, the next one I want to uh, make a point of, this is the, uh, we, we have the first and third highest rated high school recruits in Conference USA. Uh, so Jalen is the number one highest rated recruit high school wise in this conference. And Martavius Collins is number three. Uh, very, very proud of that. We, we kind of said this, I was asked about our, our recruiting strategy. Um, we are going to build the foundation of this program with high school football players. So we're very proud of that. Uh, yes, we had to take some transfers in the mid-year to, to fill our roster spots. But these high school guys, this is the found, we have been saying it to them every time they've been on campus. This is the foundational class uh, that will help us change the culture and the dynamic of UTEP uh, football. Um, moving on next, uh, very, very proud of this one. Another um, you know, thing that we talked about that's very important to my staff and I is to constantly sign the highest rated player in El Paso. We said we were going to recruit El Paso uh, football players, ones that we believe can play here and ones that can thrive here. And if it's a G5 Power 5 player in El Paso, he's not getting out of El Paso without a fight. Uh, he's either, he's either going to, we're going to fight to the bitter end and, uh, and get him here, or we're going to fight to the bitter end and, and uh, you know, unfortunately lose him. But it ain't going to be without a fight. And so I'm very excited to announce this, um, that we, we signed the highest rated player in the city of El Paso in Shea Smith in December. That is the first time since uh, 2013 uh, uh, a young man was signed up by the name of Aaron Jones around here. So uh, to be in the, uh, the, the company of uh, uh, a superstar like Aaron Jones um, and to sign the highest rated El Paso recruit is a nominal feat for our staff and for our program and where we're going. Last but certainly not least, this class, uh, we signed more three-star commits in this class uh, ever than in a single class in UTEP history. Uh, and that would be 15 uh, three-star recruits in this class. Um, that is the same as the last four years combined. Uh, the second highest uh, was 2019 when uh, six were signed. And so we've nearly almost tripled that, um, you know, in this class. And so these stats right here to throw at you guys are um, to, to, to just show the hard work of our staff and where we're going in our belief. And so I am very, very proud to have the number one signing class in Conference USA and very, very proud um, to have the highest rated class in UTEP history. This is a historic day and, and we're very excited about it. I'm going to go down the list real quick, give a quick blurb on each of these guys. Um, the 24, these are the 24 new additions that we did not cover uh, in the first signing period. I'm correct on that, I believe, my staff. Okay, I want to make sure I'm good on that. So these, these are guys we have not, we have not talked about. Um, so Javon Jackson starting out running back, Austin P. Uh, five foot eight, 200 pounds. He was a 1,300 yard rusher for us at Austin P. Got in the transfer portal. Um, you know, came on a visit in, in uh, early December, and I'll be honest, I, I, I didn't know that we were going to get him. He had North Texas, Tulsa, um, I believe he went with UConn. He went on an official visit. So we were in a battle to the bitter end until he finally called me after New Year's Day and uh, and committed. And, and hallelujah, you know, that was that was big. Um, a lot of people think that just because we we're at Austin P. and these kids get in the portal, that we're just automatically going to get them. 
these kids are sought after, uh, and I, I think that's that's shown. We lost the, one one kid got in the portal, and you know two of them actually got Power Five. Uh, you know, they're at Power Five universities now. And so uh, Javon Jackson, we, he was part of our founda- – we're talking about the foundational high school class here at UTEP. He was part of our foundational class at Austin P. He was a three-star recruit. Uh, we beat Georgia State on uh, there at Austin P. Very, very proud of that and very proud. Of, he's been three years in our shop uh, at a previous stop and, and had a 1,300-yard season, All-American running back. Very excited. Yesman Green. Um, he is the son of our co-DC, Mr. Kelvin Sigler. Uh, you know, so that was, uh, you know, huge. Obviously, Kelvin uh, coming over here and then uh, Yesman entering the transfer portal. And, and uh, he was at Jacksonville State. Yesman is a 6'2", 190-pound DB um, that I've seen up close and personal uh, when they shut us down at Austin P. Uh, when we played. Uh, that's one big reason why I hired Kelvin because, uh, you know, if you can't beat him, join him, right? I can't move the ball on his defense. And so, hey, man, just come, come join us over here at UTEP. Uh, and Yesman was a big part of that. Long corner. This kid is extremely smart. He has already put on five to 10 pounds in the weight room. Uh, Chris Campbell's doing a phenomenal job in our weight room, and this guy's going to be a force. Really long corner, something we look for. We want, we want to be as long as possible on the defensive side of the ball. And Yesman uh, is, a, is a first-class OKG, uh, but also accomplishes the, 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 uh, the attributes we're looking for in that. Uh, Devin Gorey, uh, Devin, uh, Missouri State transfer defensive end. Originally out of Denton Geyer High School. So, you know, uh, one thing in hiring Chad Johnson, the director of Texas recruiting, that is not just for high school. Uh, and our staff in, in general looks for young men in the portal from Texas to bring back home. That's a, that's a big deal for us. Uh, and Devin was one of those targets. Um, when you watch his film, the first thing we look for in a defensive lineman is ball get off. If, if you get off the ball slow, we don't want you. And Devin, uh, you, you'll watch the first three clips of his highlight tape. Uh, he, he gets off the rock. Um, he, he had multiple TFLs, multiple sacks um, there, there at Missouri State, a proven uh, player at, at the collegiate level, and then played at a championship program in Denton Geyer at the high school level. Uh, something, something we value in recruiting is guys from winning programs because, again, it, it, it can't be 100%. I wish we could take um, you know, every state champion, but you're, you're going to find a, a, a diamond in the rough, so to speak, a really good player on a, on a bad team. But we want to find – Majority of the time, a state champion, a district champion, somebody who's part of a program that wins because winners know how to win, and we want to be surrounded by winners. And uh, that's something Devin is about. Dylan Williams, uh, Nacogdoches High School, was a Nacogdoches Dragon in Beast, Texas. All right, signed to North Texas. Um, and so he was at UNT and then uh, got in the transfer portal, and now he is a UTEP minor. Um, Dylan, well, I recruited Dylan at Southern Miss, and I was blown away by his athletic ability. I, this kid's highlight tape, uh, you know, he against Hallsville uh, High School, he takes a 90-yard a, a interception, might be 80-yard uh, interception to the house. You can see him open up and see his speed. Uh, the young man can run. And seeing him in the weight room, looking at uh, the weight he's putting on, uh, he, is, he is combining the size with his speed. And I'm really excited about Dylan. I, I think he, he's got tremendous Upside and to get a Nacogdoches Dragon in the building uh, says it means a lot. That's a very prominent program out in East Texas, uh, which we call Beast Texas around here uh, and out there. You know, uh, so uh, Dylan is a stud. Uh, so couldn't get him the first time around at Southern Miss, and so very thankful to get him this time around. Dorian Hopkins from Tulsa. This young man uh, is an OKG all the way. Uh, he was the president of uh, SAC at Tulsa. Uh, this kid is. You know, he's going to be a heck of a football player, but, you know, he's going to lead a Fortune 500 company one day or something like that. So I want to be surrounded by Dorian. All right, so, so low-key, greedy uh, by me recruiting him because I, I want – maybe he'll be my financial guy one day. I don't know. This guy is smart as get, I'll get out. He's a leader. Um, he comes highly recommended for, from, uh, from um, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, MUS High School, a prominent school there in Memphis, Tennessee. His uh, head coach – his now head coach um, – uh, who, who we've known for a long time in the recruiting process. Uh, Coach Chubb just got the job out there at MUS. As soon as we got the job here, he, he, he was like, hey, I need you to know this kid's in the portal at Tulsa. You need to know about this kid. And, you know, I wouldn't send you anybody. I and we, we, as soon as we called Dorian, uh, Coach Clark got on the phone with him, and uh, the kid was OKG all the way. Unbelievable player and unbelievable person. Dylan Brown Turner, uh, Florida State transfer. Uh, you know, one of our Power Five, uh, uh, I think our only Power Five uh, you know, transfer um, 
you know, which, which, which was huge. Uh, but South Oak Cliff, winning program, uh, play, played at South Oak Cliff High School, a phenomenal linebacker who has great size. It says 210 right here. I think I saw this kid today. He looks like he's 220 already. Uh, long, can run, athletic. Um, obviously, you can tell on his high school highlight tape why he was committed to play Power 5 football at Florida State. Um, and, and we're very, very thankful to get Dylan in the boat. Uh, you, you, we'll we'll uh, talk about another young man later that we signed from South Oak Cliff. So getting that, that pipeline started in Dallas is really, really big for us. Um, again, SOC winning program, state champs, uh, or they're playing for it every year. And uh, Dylan knows how to win. I believe Dylan won two. Two state championships, am I right on that, Coach? Uh, two state championships in his high school career. And so uh, very excited to get a winner in Dylan Brown-Turner. Uh, next up is Calvin Hill from Texas State. Again, another guy kind of like Dylan, uh, you know, missed on him the first time around, got him on the back end, um, was recruiting uh, Calvin at Southern Miss. And Calvin, you know, I, I believe Calvin was one of the more under-recruited young men in the state of Texas when he came out. This kid can absolutely fly. He's got 2,000 yards uh, in his career at the collegiate level. The thing that we wanted to find in the portal as much as possible, if we didn't have a relationship with the guy or didn't know him, we wanted him to be able to have produced where he was at. And that's, that's, that's really for all our guys, but if we don't know him, we definitely want that. It was a double whammy with Calvin. We knew him. Uh, I knew his personality. He played it, uh, there, there in Baytown um, and is a, is a phenomenal football player. Signed to Texas State. Couldn't get in the first time round. Gets in the portal. He's got 2,000 yards to his name there, there at Texas State. Was our starting running back. I, I, I know for one year for sure, perhaps two years. Went into this, this season as the starter. Um, and they, they had an All-American kid who, who had a heck of a season there. Um, but Calvin is here lifting with us. He's ready to go mid-year. Really excited about his speed. And, you know, his size is deceptive. He's a shorter guy, but he's really thick, muscular kid. Uh, Xavier Smith, safety from Austin P, uh, six foot, 185 pounds. Uh, we, might be, uh, we might be a little generous, uh, under, under selling him there. He's uh, he measured the other day, almost 200 pounds. He's on the dot, and he's about six foot, one and some change. Zay, uh, we, we signed at Austin P out of Colorado. Um, uh, he was a P5 kid out of Langston Hughes High School. The thing I love about Zay, he was a high school quarterback. And so he's really, really smart. Ended up being a, a freshman all-conference player for us at Austin P. Took over the starting job. And, man, uh, th this kid, his we got three years, I believe three, right, Coach? Uh, should have three years left with him. This kid, his upside is through the roof. So we have not seen his best ball yet. And, and he had a heck of a season for us at Austin P. Uh, again, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, product, Langston Hughes High School. Excited for uh, Xavier to be here. Jalen Shelton, uh, long, again, goes back to that length we won at DB. You know, this, this young man is a, is a – he is all a 6'2". He might be pushing 200 pounds now. Sometimes I think he looks like a dang linebacker. Uh, but this kid can run um, out of West Russ High School in East Texas, another beast Texas product, okay. Uh, you know, was that, was that Texas State? Originally signed to West Virginia. We, we recruited this young man. I, I, two times at Austin P and fought our tail off. Uh, and, you know, that's why, you know, we tell these guys all the time, you just keep fighting because you never know uh, how this day and age works and you end up getting a kid. Uh, he started out at West Virginia uh, and then, and then uh, played junior college ball, Tyler, uh, signed at Texas State, and now he's with us here at UTEP. And so, um, you know, Jalen, a, he's a, he's a, he's a well-versed traveler. Uh, he's he's, a, he's a, a mature young man, uh, very, very excited about his uh, – uh, ability to play. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a long athletic guy. Quinzavius Warren from Jacksonville State, 6'2", 330, and this kid is all of it, nose guard. Um, we recruited him originally at Austin P out of Northwest Junior College in Mississippi. Uh, was fantastic there. Went to Jacksonville State, was in the rotation. We feel like this kid can come in and add some serious value early in terms of his, uh, his size and his experience. Uh, so Qu Quinn is a, a big time get for us late there. Kind of moving in, I believe the rest of these guys will kind of move into our high school class. Um, so Stratton Schufelt, um, Strat, Cleveland High School in Albuquerque, New Mexico, 6'2", 220. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, I'll, we were looking for guys. It was funny, uh, high school players that were unsigned. And, uh, man, I DM Strat over the, like the, the Christmas break there. And uh, he's like, yeah, coach, uh, actually my dad, you know, played at UTEP. And, oh, cool, like. What's his name? I'll look him up. And, uh, you know, Pete Schufelt, who's only the top 10 leading tackler all time here at UTEP and, uh, you know, played five years in the NFL. I was like, yeah, he, he was – I think he was pretty good. We, we might need to take a look at this kid. And it was funny. I, I messaged Coach Clark that day. Coach Clark's like, Coach, I've already been talking to the kid. I'm on it. And so uh, I, I can't tell you how excited we are to get Strat 
um, you know, in, in the UTEP minor, uh, 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 blue, blue and orange colors. Um, you know, I, I, go to, I go to Pete. Pete's office uh, where he works in Albuquerque, man, he's got all the uh, – he's he was educating me on, on the UTEP history. He's got all the old logos and everything. It's unbelievable uh, to get um, – to keep it in the family. And uh, it was a really cool official visit uh, getting him back on campus and, you know, his face kind of lighting up and seeing, um, you know, the place so he once played. But let me tell you, we're not just recruiting Strat just because his dad played here and was a heck of a player. Strat, uh, all you got to do is watch his tape. Number one player in the state of New Mexico, and it's for a reason. Highly rated three-star recruit, um, unbelievable football player, physical, um, OKG all the way. He loves heavy metal music just like my DC does, so they're going to get along just fine. Uh, Ashton Coker, uh, super excited to get Ashton. 6'2", 290. Um, I'll say this. On his official visit, uh, from, uh, he's from Katie Taylor High School there in Houston, weighed in at 303 pounds, and you would not know it. He looks like he's 275. Not an ounce of fat on this kid. Super muscular, super twitchy. When you watch his film, again, number one thing we look for in D-line is that ball get off. This kid gets off the rock. He's going to be a nose guard. The thing about him, OKG all the way, personality type, unbelievable family. His brother played at TCU and just played in the Shrine Bowl and is about to get drafted uh, as a projected mid-round to late-round draft pick. He's an offensive tackle. Um, so he, he's, he's got the gene pool. Um, an unbelievable family. Uh, is one of the coolest kids, uh, just just personality wise that we've met. Uh, really excited about Ashton, heck of a football player. Wandami Davis, Wandami in his high school, six one one eighty. Wandami's a multi sport athlete, ten seven hundred meter. Um, this kid right here, deceptive when you watch his film. A lot of people thought we recruited him as a quarterback. We recruited him as a receiver. Jake Brown, our OC, had a relationship with him there from Louisiana Tech, was uh, offered him at Louisiana Tech. Um, and this kid had multiple G5 offers. Uh, this kid can run. There's a, there's a route or a, a clip that sticks out in my mind in each one of these kids' highlight tape. And, and this one is at the forefront of my, my mind. He runs a post route, textbook post route, sticks his foot in the dirt, and you can see all of that 10, 700 meter just blow by the guy. You know, uh, again, played every position. I think, uh, especially when you play for Coach Harrell at Ennis, you know, the Ennis Lions are a prominent program in the state. And if, if Coach Harrell trusts you to get behind that center, you know, you, you're an OKG. Uh, you're a leader. There's some substance about you uh, that matters. This kid got behind center did because he's their best player, did everything for him, and then whenever they could, split him out wide. And, man, he'd run by guys. And, uh, man, it was fun to watch his highlight tape. Very, very unique skill set. This kid's going to play receiver for us, uh, but he's smart. I love recruiting former quarterbacks. Uh, if you can't tell, Trey Goodman, who we brought in, who's here with us right now, former quarterback. Xavier Smith, former quarterback. Uh, 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 my man, R R Raf Campbell, I'm about to talk about next, former quarterback. Wandami, former quarterback. So these guys that play quarterback that have been entrusted with, with that of a football team and then going to play another spot – is, is, is a really big plus in our eyes. So going on to, to uh, uh, Raphael Campbell, uh, Arlington Bowie High School, we call him Raf, call him Riff Raf to, 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 to give him a nickname. 5'11", 175. This cat might be more 180. We were the first offer. We offered Raf first at Austin P State University his junior year. This kid had to play quarterback as well because he's the best player on the team. District MVP there uh, in, the, in the district that Arlington Bowie is in, which is one of the toughest districts in the state of Texas. So when, when this kid was named you know, MVP of that district, that, that says a lot, guys. This kid is a 10-7, a, a, a is he 10-7 coach? I think he's 10-7, 10, 10, 800 meter, uh, a track guy once again. This kid can fly. You watch his highlight tape. He's, you know, I love watching skill guys' highlight tapes when you watch one to two minutes and it's straight touchdowns, and that's what Raf has. So we're excited to get Raf in the building. Brandon B.J. Jones, uh, man, high three-star recruit uh, from, uh, from South Oak Cliff in Dallas. Again, keeping that connection going, that pipeline going. This, this kid's the epitome of the Orange Swarm defense. Uh, he hunts and he hits, bottom line. He hunts the football, and when he, when he hits something, one thing we look for on defense is when we watch a defensive highlight tape, what they hit has to go backwards. And uh, what this kid hits, it goes backwards. And he is just scratching the surface of how good he can be. He, uh, you know, some guys even talked about recruiting him as a safety because, you know, his build. We think that this kid is going to end up being 190, 200 pounds, and even maybe then some. He's got a great frame on him. And, again, he's just scratching the surface how good he can be. Um, a state champ once again at South Oak Cliff. Played for the state championship this past year. Uh, really excited to get BJ, uh, you know, in the group here. High three-star recruit in the state of Texas. Uh, th this kid's highlight tape might be one of my favorites. Craig Wydra, El Paso Andrus. 
you know, uh, Coach Castor, Coach Delaney went by. I, you know, I kind of said this in my press conference. We were going to go by every single high school in El Paso. And when we did that, we uncovered some gyms. We found out some guys that were, hey, potential walk-on guys. And, and we even uncovered Wydra. And, and I'll never forget, they sent me a picture of Craig. Uh, and I was like, this kid is still – he's in El Paso and he hasn't signed anywhere. And, like, Coach, he's still out there. Then you watch this film, the number one thing that we love about offensive linemen and we, we want to see in, in their film – and Craig does it to a T, is finish. And, man, he, he is nasty. He finishes. This kid is all a 6'3", 290. We, we do comparisons when we bring – and not to put the kid on a – put pressure on him or anything, and he, he knows this, but, like, when, they, when we bring him on visits, we try to visualize, uh, you know, who they match in the NFL. And one thing that we said about Craig is we, we view him very similar to Will Hernandez that came through here. Uh, Will was 305 pounds. Out of, out of high school, uh, you know, he's six foot three out of high school. We did the measurements. You know, Craig is about six three, three hundred pounds out of high school. Craig, and I may have this flip, so forgive me, but Craig squats more. No, Will squatted more in high school than Craig does, but Craig benches more than Will did. And I may have that backwards, so I hope Will doesn't, doesn't hurt me on that. Haven't, haven't met him yet. I know he's a big guy. All right, but uh, we, we think that Craig moves very similar to Will, and he is physical. So, like, the fact that you know, he's out here. And then when, when I went by recruiting, I thought the OV was going to be boring. Uh, and he, you know, because I, th- I figured he'd been here eight or five, you know, eight or ten times. And, you know, and he's like, Coach, this will be my first time, like, getting to see the football facilities. And I'm like, that's, you know, that, that, that's, that, that's unbelievable. And so I think it was really cool. He kind of got to come in here and experience this. And it was boom. Uh, you know, he was committed to Army. Um, and, and we were really excited to get him over to be a minor. Uh, next up, I, I think this kid may be the, potentially the him and a and, – Two other guys come to my mind on this list. Potentially the most underrated kids on this list. Kyron Duhon at a humble Summer Creek High School in, in uh, Houston, Texas. Humble uh, Summer Creek is the first humble ISD school uh, to go to a state title game because of all the humble schools. All the talent is dispersed down there. If those were two to three schools, you'd be seeing those schools in the state title game every year. They get in the state championship, played DeSoto, and Kyron was the heart and soul of this team. When we went by the school – there was not a person in that school that would let us leave without us knowing about Kyron Duhon. And it was not just because of his ability. It was because of the type of young man this kid is. I mean, I, his D-line coach there, I, I mean, I think would adopt the kid if he could. They were that tight. And I, 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 it's high school coaches like that that I get fired up about that pound the table for a kid. Th- that, that, that's why you do this, uh, to get to see that relationship. Kyron is an absolute stud, a motor upon motors this kid has phenomenal ball get off uh and and he's about he's about 250 255 right now he's got a frame where he's going to get big elijah baldwin uh san antonio john jay high school defensive lineman six foot seven 210 pounds so when people see see that they're kind of like is that like some people thought maybe he's a tight end he's a receiver this kid's a d lineman and uh you know one, one thing on his highlight tape uh he's got ball skills he's intercepting passes we wanted to get long on defense we compare this kid. We think this kid is very similar. Again, not to put pressure on the kid. The kid we already compared it to him on the on the visit. But Marcus Davenport, who played at UTSA, uh, a very I saw him up close and personal at Southern Miss. This kid right here is all a six seven, you know, two hundred ten pounds. And on the OV, uh, him and Echo, who I'm going to talk about in a minute, they proved that they can eat really, really well. So I have no doubt in my mind these dudes are going to put on weight. We'll look up in a year. And see this kid 6'7", 250, and we'll be talking about an NFL football player, man. I think this kid is special, special from his talent and his skill set. He's got to put weight on, no doubt, our nutrition. We feel like we have the resources through our nutritionist, Stephen Curtis, and our strength conditioning coach, Chris Campbell, to do that. This kid is one of the best basketball players in the city. Had basketball offers as well, so super athletic. I, I feel like we stole one in, uh, in Elijah Baldwin from the state of Texas. Alan McCarter. Manville High School, 6'4", 260. Uh, coach Jared Castor did a great job finding this guy and recruiting this kid. His high school head coach, Kirk Martin, is an alum of UTEP. Uh, was really, really cool to get to go by, see Coach Martin, and get to see that UTEP helmet in his office. Um, and, and Allen is a, 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 a straight, uh, just OKG. This kid is like Craig. He finishes on tape. The thing about Allen, super athletic. And this kid – is going to weigh 280, 290. He might end up being a 300 pounder uh, when it's all said and done. And he's all a six foot four. Um, I think he can play interior for us. Uh, we want to be really big at those guard spots, center spots. Kid is smart as a whip, unbelievable family, and plays at a winning program in Manville High School. Um, I think everybody knows the tradition there. 
Echo Taylor, got one of the coolest names out of the whole bunch. Echo, I love the way he spells it too. Uh, Echo is, uh, again, to me, I, I, I don't know how this kid, uh, you know, slipped under the radar. He is all of six foot five, 220 pounds. His wingspan is unbelievable. He and Elijah are going to be some of the longest kids in our program. Echo played at Fossil Ridge. He's going to be an outside linebacker, outside linebacker bandit. Again, I was sold Friday night, eating at Julio's. Joker threw down five plates. Done deal. I was like, he's going to be just fine. So he is 6'5". He, he is going to end up getting to 250, 260. And, I mean, he's as long as, as this table, if not longer, when he puts his arms out. The kid is a, a phenomenal human being, a great um, just personality. Uh, Jairus, his mom, unbelievable woman, great family. Let us in their home. Cool thing, quick story on that. In the home visit, we walk in. I love to see this. We walk in the living room. They got UTEP football games playing. All right, and it was it was uh, against FIU when last year when UTEP beat the beat the heck out of FIU. That was fun to watch. You know, get to see that on their living room TV. They were that fired up about the visit, and so we were really excited uh, to get Echo. Uh, next up, Luca Matamoros. Uh, Luca is a kid that we got on late. Uh, Coach Jerry Caster, uh, Coach Jake Brown. Uh, you know, through his connections, Pflugerville Henderson High School. Again, another young man. I feel like we found three long gems late in Luca, Echo, and Elijah, uh, and really four in Jalen Jones, who I'll talk about in a minute. But Luca is all a 6'5". He is going to be a 300-pound kid. This kid, he is, he is a former wrestler. Uh, he has great leverage, uh, great body control, and is physical and finishes. It's, it's rare that you find a 6'5", 6'6", kid that is this physical. And so that, that was something that attracted us to Luca. We're really excited to get him. Uh, Jalen Jones, uh, you're going to hear a lot about this young man, 6'4", 210, bandit from Beaumont Westbrook High School, now the highest rated uh, recruit in UTEP history, um, and rightfully so. You watch his film, what he hits goes backwards, and he, is, uh, he has an 83-inch wingspan. He is the longest kid that, I, that I've ever coached. Uh, he will be the longest kid in this program. Um, he is going to be uh, a, a really, really good player, but the thing that sold us on Jalen was – uh, you know, whenever, obviously, you, you have a kid that's unsigned, obviously, all these guys, we want to find out about their character first. And that's what defines them as an OKG. And I was blown away by Jalen, uh, his, his family, unbelievable, tight-knit family. Jalen was first class on the visit, dialed into every detail. He, he, the, the kid is a winner. The kid wants to win at a high level. Um, th this young man uh, was committed to Purdue for a long time, uh, decommitted, and that, and when we saw he decommitted, we, we hopped all over it, and I give credit, man, to our staff, uh, specifically uh, Seth McDonald, our Bandits coach, and J.J. Clark, our D.C., and, our, and you know, we, 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 we flooded it, went down there, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and went down and, and saw him play basketball. That was really cool to watch. He's a, he's a you know, Westbrook's got a great basketball program, and he's killing it for their team. Uh, his athleticism is through the roof. Uh, next up, th these, two, these two guys, Marcus Torres, wide receiver at Pebble Hills. Um, obviously, he's the son of Coach Torres there, uh, uh, who just took the Butte Hayes job but was there at Pebble Hills. 5'10", 175. We think Marcus is, uh, you know, you're talking about a kid who's like a 4.0 GPA. This kid knows how to find open grass, which is paramount. Uh, you know, for our offense, you have to be able to read coverage, read leverage, and find open space. This kid, I don't care how small he is. He's twitchy, uh, he's athletic, and on top of that, he's smart and savvy. And we want to find those El Paso kids that care about this university. And this kid is going to wear that UTEP minor jersey like a badge of honor, and that's something we look for. Uh, last but certainly not least is Aiden Webb, kicker out of Dallas Woodrow Wilson High School, 6'2", 175. You, you, you got to love this kid's mentality, man. This kid is a winner. This kid has a strong leg. He, is, uh, he can do uh, a lot of things, but he's a place kicker. Um, the thing I, we look for in kickers is uh, can they handle the heat? What's their personality like? This kid is as boisterous as one of our receivers, and I love it. Uh, he's as confident as our starting X receiver. That's what you want in a kicker, okay? Uh, and we think this kid has got a shot to be really special. Our, our defensive coordinator, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Papalardo, which, again, defense for us is special teams, uh, did a phenomenal job of uh, recruiting this young man. So uh, these 24 guys we're adding, uh, I could not be more excited. Number one class in this conference, best class in UTEP history. Uh, we have a lot to be proud of, and uh, we're going to celebrate it. So um, I apologize for being long-winded, but, you know, really excited about this class. And with that, I'll open up for questions uh, with you guys. Yeah, I think, you know, number one, you hit on the head, hard work. But the one thing I think separates us in recruiting is, is we, we have a plan. 
a, a concrete plan that we have molded over the years. Uh, I think it's an advantage to be together as a staff for as long as we've had, we have, we, we've been, you know, you've got guys on my staff been with me for three or four years now. They know exactly what to expect. They know exactly how we do things. And, and it's really cool to see how our visits have, you know, morphed over time. Uh, our, we're, I think we're, we're known for our photo shoots, and uh, those things have turned into da daggum music videos. Could be on MTV. Uh, you know, they used to just be normal, uh, run-of-the-mill photo shoots, but those th these things can go viral in a heartbeat uh, if you're there. Uh, and I think it's because our staff, just the genuine auth auth authenticness of just, just letting things happen naturally. You know, we have a plan, but, uh, man, when the parents are feeling it and the kids are feeling it, uh, you know, we, we, we cut it loose, and that's been really cool. But I, I think the biggest thing with our staff um, is authentic, authenticity. We're genuine, and we're who we are. We don't back down who we are. I, don't th I think when kids come on this campus, they, they, don't, uh, they don't walk away feeling like, oh, I just got sold a can of goods. Like, they know what we told them is real. And if they want to be a part of it, cool. And if they don't, no hard feelings because, uh, you know, we're talking about a lot of guys we signed, and rightfully so. We're focused on – there's some guys we didn't sign, and that is because it, it's not a fit, and that's okay. You know, we're, we're not for everybody, and, that, and that's okay with us. Um, the, the other thing I'll say is this. The word is in, 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 that we've had 200 kids on a junior day now uh, in, in, on campus, and we've had, you know, I mean – Lord knows how many official visitors, right? Uh, you know, my compliance department would like to remind me how many we used. Uh, yeah, all of them. Uh, Taylor would say all of them. Um, but I'll say this. Pete, the word is getting out on what this place is, which is a good thing because this place is amazing. Uh, like El Paso, Texas is the, the number one place in the state, number one place to be. And I'll, I'll go on the record saying that. Like, when you come out here, I can't tell you how many kids came out here and said, Coach, I didn't know it was like this. Coach, we didn't know this was here. We didn't know uh, that the Sun Bowl looked like this. We got, we got to get our brand out there, man. We got to get – we have a phenomenal product to sell. We have to bring it to people's living rooms. And now what's about to happen, that's why we're starting to wake this thing up because now people are realizing what's out here, and they're going to they're gonna come out here more. And these kids are realizing not only what is out here in terms of, man, the mountains are beautiful, uh, the food is phenomenal, right, but the biggest thing is the people. That's the number one thing that people talk about leave is the genuineness, the, the, uh, the passion of the fans. When we go, when we take these kids out on the town, like everybody stops us to take pictures, stops us to say, oh, my gosh, you, hey, you're a recruit. Welcome to El Paso. Like it's unbelievable the passion that this city has for, for UTEP and for the city of El Paso. And so as we get more people here, they're starting to open their eyes. And, and I'm telling you, man, like it's just going to get better from here. That's something I'm really excited about. Yeah, obviously, obviously hard to predict, but I think I think a lot of them. I mean, I think that you know there's going to be uh, guys in this class. We talk about it, UTEP for a long time, a long time to come. Um, one thing that we and again we talk about in the exit meetings, talk to everybody. It's like I, I never guarantee anybody playing time. Um, there's there when these kids come and they sit on that orange sofa up there in my office. We do exit meetings. It's uh, you know I'm not guaranteeing you playing time. I'm guaranteeing you an opportunity. Um, that being said, the best players play. So. Uh, our, our team knows that. The recruits know that. If we have a, if we have a freshman that comes in and, and starts, it, it, that means he's the best player. Uh, again, I'm not a believer in it has to be a, a hierarchy. Um, a junior has to start. A senior has to start. The best players play. Um, if you're asking me, I, I think all of these guys um, are going to have a chance at some point to contribute uh, to what we're building here um, at UTEP. Um, and I think some guys will be prominent names that we know for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I think we've already done that. I, I, th I think in the evaluation process, we do that. You know, we're really intentional with the way we watch film. Uh, we've watched, we vetted these guys. We've watched them multiple times. We have a, you know, again, this is a, this is not a random approach. This is a very systematic approach we, we have to go through. And, and, and so, I mean, we have, a, we have a player personnel guide where we have a specific guidelines of what we are looking for at each position, right? So I think we've already, we already envision before we go after the young man. Because it's one thing, because don't get me wrong, there was a lot of three-star, even four-star, like, unsigned guys in the state of Texas in January. We had to decide which ones to go after. Because some may not have fit culturally. Some did not fit schematically. We had to identify the ones that fit us culturally 
and that also fit us schematically, right? Uh, we, we're looking for certain skill sets at each position. We're, we're, we're not recruiting random. And so we have, we've already done that in terms of when we recruited the guy, we see this young man being this. And I think that's where kind of, um, you know, talking about those comparisons where we see you compared to an NFL guy or to a guy that's played here at UTEP, that's some of the things that I'm, that I'm kind of alluding to there. But, uh, you know, we, we definitely have a vision for each of these young men. And, and, again, these stars are great. These ratings are great. But it's all about the fit. And it just so happens the fit happened to be highly, ra- highly rated guys, which, hallelujah, right? That's it's, it's a double whammy. But at the end of the day, we're never going to compromise recruiting a young man uh, because maybe he doesn't have a ranking, um, but he's a fit. We're, go- we're going to do it. Like, perfect example is like Kyron Duhon. Like, I don't know how Kyron Duhon is not a – three-star recruit in the state of Texas. He's unbelievable. Again, that's my opinion. I'm biased now, right? I'm his coach, right? But uh, this kid is an unbelievable player. We didn't care if he had no stars or not. We, we believe he fits us at the D-line spot, and so that's why we went after him. So it's all about the fit. So we live in a time where uh, instant results and, you know, that, that type of deal. Uh, yeah. Are all these guys you feel, you're talking about fit, do you feel all these guys can, like, just jump in and, 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 and take it? Well, I mean, I'll be transparent with you. Um, you know, I, I still haven't worked with the guys that are on the roster yet. So it's, it's, hard to t- it's, it's hard to tell. I will say this. Yes, at some point. You know, like there's no doubt in my mind that every one of these guys has the skill set to be able to contribute to this program. When? I don't know. That's going to be up to them. That's going to be up to what we have on the roster. That's going to be up to the, to the work of um, the guys in this locker room currently, right? Because uh, if, if those guys are working really hard and they're really talented, then – you know, um, you know I, t- I tell my teams every year, the guys that are currently on the roster, I tell them all the time during the recruiting season, hey, it's your job to make sure that I recruit your backups. That's your job, not my job, because I'm going to recruit great players to try to, to try to bolster this program. It's not my job to go recruit guys uh, to be average, right? So these guys that are on, the, on campus, it's their job to make sure that the guys coming in are their backups because of how hard they work, right? Um, but I, I'd be lying to you if I told you, that, that I didn't think these guys can't, can't – obviously we wouldn't sign them. We didn't think that. We th- I think at some point these guys can come in and help, and I do think there is definitely a few that we will see on the field sooner rather than later. And I, I don't know who that is yet because you never know till you get between those white lines because the stars, all the offers, none of that stuff means anything except uh, when you get between those white lines, let's, let's play some football, right? So, but I definitely think we're going to have some early contributors in this class because, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're super talented. <laughs> they're super talented. And I also want to give a shout-out to um, – I should have said this in the beginning, but to our current players, those guys, we have a player panel portion of our visit, and we have uh, player hosts where these guys are tagged with a guy, and they're with them the entire weekend showing them the, you know, UTEP and, and, and educating them on, uh, you know, the university and our program. They take time out of the schedule to do that, guys. These guys are taking full-time class loads, working out every day, and taking time out of the schedule. I really appreciate our players what they did. One of the most unique things we do at our visits is a player panel where we get five guys to sit up here. We do not script anything. Every single coach leaves, and we leave. Again, we, we believe in authenticity. It, it'll be the parents in here and the, and the recruit and then five players, and they can ask them whatever they want. And our, our players, I mean, those sessions minimum go 45 minutes. I mean, they are literally that's the, the best feedback I get about our visits is that transparency. Um, and um, so our players have to take time to do that, and they usually that's like on a Saturday. So uh, we really appreciate their time for that. So I, so here's my stance on red I, I was asked that in the recruiting process a lot. I, we never sign a high school player with the intent to red them. We do not do that because I like for, forecasting that on them, in my opinion, is wrong because when a kid gets to your campus. You may have thought one thing, but then all of a sudden, this kid's a real deal. We may have thought in our mind this kid needs a year to develop, but all of a sudden he becomes a primetime player. So we do not make those decisions until we set our two deep and, and we go about the season. The caveat to that is we're not going to waste a young man's year if we can save it and he's only playing three plays a game or something like that. Uh, we want to say that, but also my stance on redshirting is it's always what's best for the team, not the individual. So if – uh, you know what, we, we have an R5 on kickoff that he's the best R5 in this league, and he is just making every single stinking tackle. But he's a freshman. He don't play much on offense or defense. Hey, man, we're going to do what's best for the team. That kid's got to be our starting R5, and that, that, that is what it is. And I think it's about creating a culture of the team first. And so uh, we, we, to answer your question, none of these guys I'm going into the season thinking we're going to redshirt him 
we're, or we're not going to redshirt him. I'm going into it thinking all of them uh, have a chance to play. And, uh, and, if, and if it doesn't work out, then we'll redshirt them. If it does, uh, man, that means, they, that means they're special players to be able to play as a freshman. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it further validates it, right? I was talking to somebody about this uh, the other day. Grow, I'll say this. It validates it because of this, like, growing up in the state of Texas and, you know, and, and, and recruiting the state of Texas and UTEP not really being prevalent in the high schools and in the recruiting realm, it, it validates it fully that what we're doing – I'm not saying we're perfect by any means. We, we, have a, we have a lot to clean up. But I think that what we do a good job of is – uh, making notes post visit and making adjustments week to week and little things intentionality um, like little things like that you don't think of is, is like you know what what kids what what do, do these kids that come on a visit do they have an allergy to anything does their family have an allergy at the dinner if you don't ask that and you you throw out a meal and they're like whoa I can't eat that I mean that's I mean little things like that go a long way to people and so that's one of many examples but it does validate that the, the process works and our system works and um, you know we got to keep evolving though right I mean like. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all about uh, continuing to grow and evolve, and we'll do that from this. But it definitely validates it further and, uh, and uh, r really, uh, really cool to see it. Scotty, I don't know how many high schools there are in Texas, but how many would you say that you touch, not only you and your staff, for this class, but for 25 and so Oh, my gosh. That's a phenomenal question, John. Um, well, I mean, I don't know, guys, help me out. Well, well, well it has to be over 1,000, right? I mean, well over 1,000. I mean, you guys think? Uh, somewhere around there, roughly. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, it, 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 and when you say touch, I'm talking about calls, even the ones we didn't physically visit, like calls to coaches, things like that, like, you know, being able to, you know, be involved in those programs. It was a lot. <laughs> it was definitely a lot. Uh, not a lot of sleep from my guys. Uh, we, we, were, we were pounding the pavement. But I'll say this, I, to not give you an accurate number, but every region of Texas was hit for sure from the Panhandle to West Texas, um, you know, to Houston, to San Antonio, to Austin, to East Texas, to Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, probably didn't get down to the Valley as much as we wanted to, um, but, um, you know, that'll be something in the future we get down to see a little bit. But uh, there's definitely not a, not a speck that wasn't a region that wasn't touched for sure. March the 18th, first practice. Am I right on that? March 18th, first practice, yep. Yeah, bring it on. We, 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 want, we want it to be tough, so there, hey, there's, no, there's no, uh, no excuses, right? I mean, I think every, every, uh, every schedule that you have, there's going to be some good, some bad of it, right? Um, we're excited as heck about it. I'm fired up. I love the way the schedule sets. I think it's awesome. I think it's very competitive. Um, you're talking the, – the, the best thing is you get to play six nationally televised games to get our brand out, though, the four in October and then obviously Nebraska and Tennessee, right? That's six amazing opportunities to get our brand out there on national television to recruits and to the nation to show what we're building here at UTEP. Obviously, we know Conference USA is very competitive. Uh, it could go to any team. Uh, you, you've got, uh, you know, just a, a wide open uh, conference that you're playing in, which I think makes it really fun, um, you know, where it's not, um, uh, you know, necessarily one or two teams dominating it. Um, the, the, the home and away games, obviously, you love to – you love, you, you'd love to play seven home games and five away games, right? You'd love to be at the Sun Bowl more. But that's just, you know, kind of how it fell this year. But it is what it is. Uh, but I'll say this. I think that the way uh, the bye weeks hit, I think all that, I really like the way all that lines up. But, uh, you know, we're really excited, uh, you know, and, and we're, we're going to find out about us pretty quick playing a great team in Nebraska up, up in Lincoln. Uh, so, so we'll find out pretty quick. But it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a challenging competitive schedule. But, you know, that, that's the way we like it.